Hello and welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, once again, President Buhari gives marching orders to security chiefs to deal decisively with bandits and kidnappers in Zamfara and other troubled parts of the country. House of Representatives gives President Buhari 48 hours to address Nigerians on the continued killings by bandits and armed herdsmen across the country. Rivers APC attempts to reverse its seclusion in the state government's election meets a dead end as Supreme Court strikes out appeal by another faction of the party. And Sudan's military sacks President Omar al-Bashir from power following weeks of protests by citizens asking him to step down after about 30 years in power. On business news tonight, Nigeria's sovereign wealth fund manager defends current investment strategy describes IMF's full ranking of the country as laughable. And on sports news tonight, the FIFA Women's World Cup trophy arrives in Nigeria in continuation of its tour of all participating nations at the tournament. And from Abuja, a federal high court suspends judgment in the suit seeking to remove Senate president and 55 other lawmakers for defecting from their various political parties. Power deliberations and strategy meetings have not stopped, at least not yet, as government authorities work towards ending the security crisis in some states in the Northwest. Today, the President again met with service chiefs at the State House, all in the bid to find a solution to the lingering issue of banditry and kidnapping. President Muhammadu Buhari is particularly worried about the situation in Zamfara State, and the meeting is perhaps a crucial one at this time. Our correspondent Gloria Humezuki reports. Armed banditry and kidnapping has been a long-running problem in northwestern states, particularly in Zamfara, spurring killings involving hundreds of residents. Please, uh, uh. Consolidating previous promises over the years to address a security menace, the federal government suspended all mining activities in Zamfara state, which was allegedly linked to persistent attacks by the bandits. In the last five months, security agencies through joint operations uncovered 50 hideouts in Mahanga Forest in Bernin Mogaji and other local government areas, killing hundreds as well as a recent destruction of eight bandit camps by the Nigerian Air Force. Few hours after that operation, the service chiefs arrive at the State House. They are meeting with President Muhammad Buhari once again in his office to intimate him and review strategies employed so far. After the closed door meeting, the Chief of Defense Staff, General Gabriel Lunishaki, and the Inspector General of Police briefs the media. Batching order is for us to deal with this issue immediately and ruthlessly and ensure that. Uh, all those uh, uh, bandits are, are, are immediately dealt with, and um, all those uh, issues that uh, are, are bordering with our security are uh, properly addressed. And, um, we are coming up with uh, a revised strategy to handle those challenges. I want to assure Nigerians that uh, Kaduna Abuja Road is now safe. We have cleared uh, the road all with arrested a lot of the kidnappers and uh, in confrontation with some of them, some were fatally injured. So the road is cleared and our patrol teams, the combined uh, security services that are pat patrolling the road are there constantly 24 hours. The federal government is confident that the latest achievements and reinforcements will help significantly quell the persistent security challenge in the nation's northwest region. From the Presidential Villa, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. The President's meeting with the service chiefs is perhaps timely, but that's not stopping the lawmakers in the House of Representatives from giving the President 48 hours to appear before them to address the nation on the killings by armed bandits. The House resolved that the President should, in the speech, address the inability of his administration to declare the bandits as terrorists and stop the systematic attacks despite several motions and resolutions by both chambers of the National Assembly. Our correspondent, Lanri Lassisi, reports. These are the ruins left behind after an attack on this community in Benue State. 
Some communities in other states have also had to contend with attacks such as this. Displacing residents and occupying affected communities. In the House of Representatives, this lawmaker has raised the issue as a matter of urgent public importance. The House is disturbed by the resurgence of attacks by killer headsmen and alleged bandits in communities in Benue, Kaduna, Zamfara, and other states of the Federation from January 2019 till date, which has resulted in the loss of thousands of innocent lives and the displacement of thousands of Nigerians who have fled their homes. During the debate, another lawmaker highlights the need for a clear solution to the problem. Today is in Zamfara, tomorrow in Castina, another day in Benue, Taraba, all over the country, Ondo, Enugu, even in Anambra states. For us as a nation, we must work on how to protect lives and property. The lawmakers lament that the attacks appear to continue despite the numerous motions and resolutions from the House of Representatives and the Senate. What are the prayers of this motion? The House resolves to request that the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces address the nation within 48 hours on the following. The inability of the armed forces under his watch to stop the recurring death of scores of innocent Nigerians annually. The motion states that if the president fails to address the nation, it will be taken that his administration is incapable of addressing the issue and that it has failed in its primary constitutional duty of ensuring the security and welfare of Nigerians. The motion is adopted and passed. An ad hoc committee is also to be set up to hold a public hearing to find permanent solutions to the killings and attacks on Nigerians. Lanre Lassisi, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, the Council of Chiefs and Emir of Zamfara State has refuted the allegation that they've been conniving with bandits in the state. The chairman of the Zamfara State Council of Chiefs and Emir of Zamfara, Alhaji Atahiru Muhammad, made a clarification today in Guso, the Zamfara state capital, through the Emir of Bungudu, Alhaji Hassan Danfulani. The council explains that it is not aware of the deteriorating security situation in the state and that members of the council have been very active and close partners with security agencies in the fight to end banditry in the state. The council expressed its dismay with the statement of the oral minister and called on him as a matter of responsibility and urgency to name the international rulers involved in such reprehensible activities for government to take appropriate actions against them. Failure to do this will make his statement not only false, but also an attempt to tarnish the image of the traditional rulers and thereby making them scapegoats for the inability of the military and other security forces to end this, this scourge. The council appreciated the presidential marching order given to the security agencies to immediately bring an end to the situation once and for all. It noted, however, that this can only be achieved if the main camps of the bandits are taken over and security personnel stationed there for a considerable period of time, thereby depriving the bandits of territory, mobility, and supply routes, thus securing all surrounding areas. And the security talks continue. This time, Governor Kashim Shatima of Borno State has met with the Minister of Defense and the Chief of Army Staff over the situation in his state. The northeastern state of Borno has been a center of Boko Haram attacks for 10 years now, as the military and other security agencies continue to battle armed militias. But the recent evacuation of residents of Jakana community in Konduga local government area of the state by the Nigerian army is raising concern among citizens of the state. Governor Kashim Shatima of Borno and some federal lawmakers from the state arrived the resident of the Minister of Defense in Abuja. 
The primary objective of the visit is to brief the defense minister about current security situation in the state. This briefing is, however, done behind closed doors, as cameras are not allowed to film the meeting. After about half an hour, both the governor and the minister granted journalists interviews, but without much details of their meetings. He's a retired general. He's very versatile with that terrain. He has worked there and has appreciated the depth of our feelings and has promised to address those issues before the week runs out. The Minister of Defense gave strong assurances of federal government's continued support, but also advises the governor to visit the chief of army staff over the recent evacuation of residents of Jakana community in Borno state. You cannot uproot somebody from his village because of operation. You know, we had two means of dealing with insurgency. You had the hard approach and the political approach. The political approach is where you take people along, where you call them winning the hearts and minds of the populace. And the other one, the hard approach is the military approach, which we've been doing. And politically, I think we are looking into that. And that is why I, I said I advise his executive governor to go and see uh, the chief of army staff. The governor heeded the minister's advice as he leads his entourage to the office of the chief of army staff. Again, filming is limited here. After the closed door meeting, the governor says his concerns about the evacuation of residents of Jakana community in the state, as well as other security concerns, have been put to rest. My concerns have been laid to rest. And this is the best approach as far as I'm concerned. Someone to whom you have unpetered access to. Now we have gotten our mission accomplished. They have made a lot of sacrifices. We have to commend them. Borno State, Nigeria, has been worse hit by extremist attacks since the last decade. It is hoped that this security meeting by the governor will bring some relief to citizens of the state. And staying with security matters, Leah Sharibu, the 15-year-old schoolgirl kidnapped alongside 111 others by insurgents from their school in Dapchi, Yobe State, is still in the news. Today, the Senate asked the federal government to do everything within its powers to secure the release of Leah, who is the only Dapchi schoolgirl still in Boko Haram captivity. The Senate's appeal follows a point of order by Senator Shehu Sani, drawing the attention of the federal government to the plight of the young girl. The federal government had negotiated the release of the other girls, but was able to secure the release of Leah Sharibu, who was unwilling to denounce her Christian faith to regain her freedom. It's over a year they remain in captivity in the hands of the insurgents, and it's almost over five years since the abduction of the Chibok girls. The abduction of Leah Sharibu and others have raised national and international concern on the need for the federal government and all Nigerians to put hands, hearts, and heads together to work to secure her release. Her continuous detention in the hands of the captives She'll touch on the conscience of all Nigerians. The federal government must not be tired of exploring all possible means of reaching out to those who are holding her and others hostage to secure their freedom. Efforts have actually been made by the government, but it has not been able to provide the necessary result and the civil groups have continuously applied pressure, and the media has kept her issue and that of others alive. I think it is important for us to understand and to know and to continue to take the advantage of the options of dialogue to see the possibility of getting her out of captivity. Meanwhile, the plight of the newly relocated residents of Jakana community in Borno State is now attracting international attention. 
Now, the United Nations is asking the federal government to protect and provide humanitarian assistance to the people as they settle down in their temporary shelter in Meduguri. The UN humanitarian coordinator in Nigeria, Mr. Edward Callan, said in a statement that the government should provide necessary aid to over 10,000 men, women and children who were relocated by the military. The Nigerian military had coordinated the relocation of the people of Jakana from their ancestral home to the IDP camp in Meduguri, citing security reasons. In part two, after the break, Acting Inspector General of Police Mohammed Adamu challenges officers to redouble efforts in tackling the nation's security challenges. But to the moment, do stay with us.